Hey everyone, Brady from Texture Labs here. In this tutorial, we're gonna use some basic color theory to create this extra vibrant color overlay or color tint effect. It's like a colorized with the volume turned up. Let's get right to it. I've got this great image I found on pexels.com, but I don't know how to give anyone credit for this. It looks like a third generation kind of an image it has been cropped into and maybe these reflections are even kind of photoshopped. Doesn't really matter. What we're here to do is to give it this colorized treatment. I'm gonna do that with two adjustment layers. The first one is very simple. I wanna convert this to black and white, so I'll do that with a black and white adjustment layer. All right, then the second adjustment layer is gonna create the color. This one is gonna be a gradient map adjustment layer. So there are a few different ways to overlay a single color, but I'm gonna use gradient map because there's gonna be a little bit of a cheat. I'm gonna click on the gradient to edit the colors, and technically a color overlay or colorize or tint, whatever you wanna call it, the idea is to introduce a single hue into this image, red or blue or whatever it might be. So at bare minimum, we'd replace the white with something like a bright reddish pink. And colors at the top corner of the palette are gonna give us maximum brightness and maximum saturation of that color. So this is kind of as saturated as we can get if we're gonna be really strict about it, right? But the truth is there's only one place in this whole palette that's like full blast brightness and saturation. The color just gets mixed with black all the way down. And if I put this saturated value in the middle and then introduce white on top, it's kind of the same thing. It's fully saturated here, but then it's either mixed with black or mixed with white for everything else. So what we're gonna do is cheat a little bit. I'm gonna keep this fully saturated value in the middle. Then I'm gonna drag this white out of the gradient just to kind of delete and reset this point. Then if I click once on the saturated color in the middle, then click at the top of the gradient, it'll create a duplicate point with that same color. I'm gonna edit this color, and what I'm gonna do is shift the hue toward either cyan, magenta, or yellow, whatever is closest in the spectrum. It's not necessarily important, but I think the concept for why is interesting. You'll notice that some of the colors of the spectrum appear brighter than others, right? It actually happens that magenta, cyan, and yellow, the CMY of CMYK, are the brightest colors, and the darkest ones appear to be red, blue, and green, or RGB. And there's the color theory reason for that. Cyan, magenta, and yellow are the true primary colors, which is why we use them in CMYK printing. But the way that translates to our computer monitors, which are made up of red, green, and blue pixels, is that if we were to look up really close at our monitors, we'd find that the color blue is made up of all the blue pixels turned on by themselves. So kind of one light bulb out of three turned on. Whereas cyan is made up of all the blue pixels and all the green pixels turned on. So literally twice as many light bulbs shining at your face. And once you introduce the third light bulb, the red one, that's how we get white light, so you lose the saturation. Magenta is gonna be two out of three pixels turned on. Yellow is gonna be two out of three pixels turned on. And yes, it is a little ridiculous to define how bright a color is by how many pixels it corresponds to on our little screens. But honestly, most of the time, most of us are creating work that gets viewed on a screen. So I think it's worth taking into account and even using to our advantage. So the idea is to have this top color in the gradients be another full saturation color, but just shifted slightly toward whatever is closest, cyan, magenta, or yellow. In this case, it'll be shifted a bit toward magenta. And how far you wanna shift the hue kinda of depends on what color palette you're using. I find there's sort of a sweet spot where your eye registers everything as the same color, but the colors on the top end just somehow appear brighter and more vibrant. So now the entire top half of this gradient, half the colors in our image, are actually made up of values that are 100% saturation and 100% brightness, but we can still distinguish some parts as highlights and some parts as midtones, even though they are all full values. That being said, it might be a little over the top to have 100% for the whole top half here. So I'm gonna take this midpoint color and just bring the brightness down to about 85%. So we're still going from zero to 85% brightness just at the halfway point and then 85 to 100 for everything else. So that's the basic principle for choosing the colors. I've got some presets here that I'll share with you guys. Let's apply one of these presets and I'll show you one other trick I use, which is fairly simple, but it's a little bit counterintuitive. What I'm gonna do is double click on this gradient map adjustment layer to bring up the blending options and all the way down at the bottom in the blend if section for the underlying layer, I'm gonna hold the option key or the alt key that splits this little slider in half. I'm gonna drag the black slider up to the halfway point 127. 
What that does is lets through some of the black and white, totally desaturated image, starting in the blacks and then fading out as you get toward the brighter colors. And it does seem odd to desaturate the first half of the spectrum when we just went to such great lengths to get the most saturated colors possible, right? Well, just like our eyes only register light and dark as values relative to each other, this is also the case with saturation. In order for something to look really saturated, we need some desaturated values to give it context. And kind of this dead space and the darker values is the perfect place to do that. And if I disable the preview for a second, notice here that it looks like the color is kind of multiplied on top. But with blend if turned on, it's almost like the color and the light are the same thing with the brightest parts of the image kind of radiating light and saturation at the same time. All right, well, that is the color treatment. And if I create a very simple mask for this adjustment layer, I'll kind of time ramp through this. I'm just using the polygonal lasso tool. Then I'm going to make sure I have the mask selected and hit command and control I to invert that part of this mask. Deselect, then use command and control J to duplicate this adjustment layer and invert the mask on this one. And if I select a different gradient preset for one of these, you can see this color treatment really starts to pop when you have kind of different colors up against each other. All right, well, that wraps it up. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please do hit the like button and be sure to subscribe for more Texture Labs content on the way. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.